one. Hi, I'm Ryan. Hi, I'm Kayla. And, and welcome, welcome to, to Less, Than Less Than Five, than five minutes, minutes with Ryan, Ryan and, and Kayla. Kayla. Um, is this thing on? Did you try turning it off and on again? Today, we have a very special guest, Devin Vance, who is one of our most senior engineers. Yeah, we're super happy to have him. Devin is the head of our US engineering team. And not only is he the Linux cluster wizard, he also enjoys a nice long motorcycle ride through the desert and a fine bourbon, not together. Just put that out there. <laughs> and Devin is here to talk about the three most important things that somebody should know before they trial DRBD. You know, I thought about it for a little bit, and I think some of the important things to consider is that DRBD is a block device, um, not a file system. It's not an object store. You want to treat it and use it just like you would any other block device or, you know, hard disk. Uh, you can put a file system or an object store on top of the DRBD device, but it's not that on its own. As a block device, there's no clusterware locking. This means it's essentially just an active passive solution and it's only active and accessible from one node at a time. Second point to consider is, uh, again, as I said, it's just a block device. Uh, it replicates data between the peers at the block layer. From anything written to a disk, it replicates. Um, this makes it quite useful and flexible, but it's not going to provide high availability in itself. Uh, you need to combine it with some type of cluster resource manager or cluster orchestration, uh, something like pacemaker, Kubernetes or our new project, DRBD Reactor. Third topic I want to talk about is performance. Um, DRBD is a network replicated block device. This means there's going to be some performance overhead. Uh, network performance is going to impact the storage speeds and latency. How much of an impact? Depends on your hardware and your environment. Generally speaking though, DRBD does not perform very well across long distances with higher latency. I'm sure you can replicate using the asynchronous mode, but eventually those network buffers fill and things will still run poorly. Our DRBD proxy solution was designed to help mitigate these issues, but even it has its limitations. DRBD is great, but it's far from magical. Awesome. Thank you for that info, Devin. We hope this is helpful to our viewers. And if you'd like to get signed up for a free trial to do some testing with DRBD, which is what we're here talking about today, uh, or you want to have a tech call, discuss a uh, use case further, please email us at sales at limbit.com and uh, Kayla and I will be happy to help you out. Yeah. Um, and we will see you next time. Expect another video next month. <laughs>